architectural design program has a long tradition uh, in GSAP, of course, in Colombia. But I, I, I would say also that it's been highly influential uh, in the overall context of architecture. It's here where uh, some of the most, uh, I would say, uh, celebrated uh, in, uh, kind of immersions in the digital culture were pioneer for architecture. It's here where many, many people uh, uh, develop uh, the most important part of their uh, innovations in architecture. It's here where many people uh, basically built up the position that then uh, allowed them to have a very strong voice in architecture. And for me, uh, uh, being kind of part of this legacy, uh, it's, it's quite important. And to share this every year with uh, 100 new people, it's, it's quite exciting. But I say it's kind of share with 100 new people because we keep being connected to those that in the past were part of the AD and sort of a community that keeps feeding each other. Like we basically keep discussing and that's a fundamental part of what we do. What is that that we understand by advanced? Advanced is not really this idea that there's a lineal uh, progression. We're not talking of a kind of, what is that that, that uh, makes other possibilities in architectures of solid? That's not really what we do. Advanced is really the idea that there's fundamental challenges that are shaping our times and that we uh, understand that are part of architecture. Architecture is already part of this. We want to make the best of the power of architecture to introduce more diversity, to introduce more, more uh, possibilities, to expand the spectrum of what is possible and to introduce forms of fairness and justice into the built environment in societies at large. So when we think of climate crisis, when we think of racial inequalities, when we think of the tensions across borders, when we think of the exploitation, over-exploitation of um, bodies, uh, natures, uh, uh, landscapes, climate, uh, through technology, through design, we're basically thinking that there, that's an arena where we want our voice to be important and where design can make huge changes. That is the notion of advancement that we understand is a constant reinvent, reinvention of the agency of architecture to intervene reality, to be part of reality, expanding the spectrum of what is possible and uh, rendering it more fair, uh, more exciting, uh, uh, inequity, in, uh, 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 in forms of uh, uh, dissidents with hegemonic uh, powers that make daily life more inclusive. Uh, and this is kind of what we do all the time. And we do it through specific ecosystems of questions and developments, ideas, projects, theories, concepts, techniques, methodologies that allowed us to base in references that allowed us to, to understand ways for environmental engagement. These are lines of work that we keep discussing for Angel, Marie Christine, uh, Joel, uh, uh, Ali, this is not new. We basically, been from basically a year ago, probably been exploring the possibility of uh, for architecture to promote uh, enhanced forms of environmental engage, engage, engagement to bring technologies accountable to, uh, to, un, to, to explore the possibility to rearticulate the societal, not to think architecture of something that is a new, that starts with a tabula rasa, but rather as a, a kind of ecosystem of strategies that allow to change the way societal relationships are unfold in daily life to also reconsider material cyclabilities, to move away from this culture of extraction that we inherited from modernity, to one if we understand that materiality could be cycled and that there's nothing or no such a thing as waste or resource, but rather processes and cycles in which basically materials are transformed. And that architecture is really about the entire cycle and how to operate in all the phases of those evolutions. Also in a crucial aspect of the AD, it's the line of work that uh, tries to question anthropocentrism and the, the, the exceptionality of the human 
to advance forms of interspecies justice, uh, forms of base for humans to relate to others uh, uh, in, in, uh, based on e equity, but also for humans to understand that our bodies are not zipped up, autonomous, self-contained, but rather interdependent with others, interdependent with animals, with plants, with oxygen, with gas, with uh, many things that basically need to be taken care of and are also caring for us. But also the urbanities that could regulate, that could provide uh, 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 inclusivity and fairness in the online offline urbanities or the way identities are constructed, managed, challenged, uh, racial issues, uh, the way bodies are racialized, genderized, the traditions of queerness and trans, the way that that is not really only about people and bodies, but that that constitutes societies and uh, environments and ecosystems uh, uh, if we take them seriously. All these are basically lines of words the geopolitics in the making, the way that uh, the world is organized through borders, uh, through transactions, through demarcations, through jurisdictions, and the way that that is being challenged, the way that that could be innovated, reinvented, uh, responded, uh, and the way of, uh, as well that that could be, uh, uh, we can be dissident to that through architecture and we can really respond to those situations that need to be transformed and challenged. But as you see, basically this is, uh, these eight lines of, of work are basically um, a structure to explore contemporary thinking, contemporary theory, contemporary action, contemporary basically uh, lines to challenge hegemonies and the kind of subtle knowledge. What the AD stands for is basically uh, to make it possible that in a few, uh, in, a, in a short period of time, everyone joining the program can really go through the most important readings that are shaping contemporary thinking that everyone gets familiar to them and that basically can operate to them. And as you see, they are broad enough so each of you can find your own path. Some of you will be more interested on interspecies relationships and you will grow on, the, on that and you will gain a voice as a fundamental thinker and designer operating there. Others will be basically growing in a different area. But what we want to build up is a class that has a conversation that allows us basically to operate in the leading edge, in the boundaries, of the new architecture to come. And not just as passive, let's say, uh, observers, but as fundamental actors in the, in the uh, questioning, in the pulsing, in the extension of those boundaries. This is all to say, we believe that architecture is very relevant in the making of the new world that is kind of growing in the cracks of the old ones. And we want to make sure that everyone coming to the program has the capacity the possibilities, the strength, the empowerment to operate here with a very relevant voice, understanding what is that that is being done and how that can be uh, taken further, challenged or uh, responded. Uh, basically, what, what we think, and, and this is something that initially could be challenging, but once you're in the program, this is basically uh, what we all share is the idea that when we look at buildings and when we look at the built environment, there's criticality embedded here. There's particular specific forms of political tension and political action that is enacted through buildings and through the built environment. And that is precisely this embedded criticality, not something that is added, not something that is just a discourse, but really something that is embedded in the way windows are dimensioned, in the way things are installed, in what happens to glass when it is removed from a building and taken to the dam. Uh, all those questions are precisely the ones that we use to explore how architecture is political and what is the way that through architecture we can uh, change the world and connect ourselves to the reinvention of the everyday life. How we do this? Basically, we are very careful in how this is curated uh, through the semesters. 
uh, for your class, basically you will start the summer. And I'm saying this because for the previous class, uh, the summer was kind of a long discussion, but we started in the fall. So that's very unique because it means that for the first time, there will be an overlapping between the graduating class and the incoming class, which I think will be kind, kind of unique, a great moment for, for you guys and for the school. In the summer, you will have advanced architectural design studios that we call uh, entangled studios because they are very, very much uh, designed. So you will have 18 choices and each of them exploring a way for architecture to reinvent contemporary or to operate in contemporary tensions. Uh, and they basically are understanding architecture as entangled with the making of reality. Uh, this uh, will come together with transcolarities, with this is, is the moment in which the entire class comes together. Uh, I'll tell you more about this to discuss the way architecture operates transitioning across scales. And we will have arguments, something that you will share also with the uh, uh, graduating class. Uh, basically, we invite some of the most important thinkers, both from the context of architecture and from other disciplines. Uh, we read what they've written, uh, we see their work, and we prepare a conversation with them that you guys basically have, and in which you participate and you are the ones making the questions. So we really get into the details of how they're thinking and their ideas are uh, operating and how we can basically relate or respond to them. It's a kind of a very rapid way to, to, to get a voice by discussing with others. And I mean, the, the list of people that we have brought historically, it's amazing uh, and amazingly diverse, diverse from Oscar uh, award uh, uh, filmmakers like Laura Poitras to uh, important architectural thinkers like Keller Easterlin and I could go on and on and on and uh, probably everyone that you have in mind, it's been, it's been there. Then it will follow by the, uh, the fall semester, advanced studio, history and theory elective, uh, uh, and uh, visual and technology electives. And then uh, the spring semester with the advanced studio GSAP elective and uh, GSAP visual technology electives. I, I refer to this uh, later on, but basically there's a huge pool. And this is, this is something quite exciting. The moment also, I mean, the, fall, the summer for me, it's the, the most important moment in the program because it's the, basically in, in uh, two months and a half, you basically get immersed in this huge ecosystem of possibilities. And it's quite fast, the process of getting to know basically quite a lot about the contemporary context of uh, architectural innovation. Uh, but then the, the fall is actually quite amazing as well because it's the moment that you get uh, uh, infiltrated in the entire school uh, possibilities. Uh, in the, if we go to the details of some of these, uh, the Advanced Design Studios is a culture that it's uh, quite unique of the school. Uh, the school is progressively moving into much more in person, but the studios have been open uh, throughout the fall and spring uh, with very low density and, and, uh, and um, um, what's the way they were called, like cycles, like, like rotations basically. But the, the, the studio is a fundamental part of our education. And basically it implies that uh, the, the, the question of design, but design as something that is critical is central to what we do. And design for us is very open and it very much depends on you to define what you mean to certain extent by design, but definitely not something to be avoided. It's the kind of the making the experimentation uh, the possibility of reinvention, to take the, of taking risk, of presenting new possibilities, reinventing a piece of daily life uh, in the way that, that you think could be critical. And when, uh, and when we do this, it's very public and very collective. It's something that basically happens with objects uh, uh, in front of others as something that happens live, basically, and that Odyssey is not like a, the idea of um, Kind of something you do in the dark and then you show one day, but rather something that is collectively produced uh, in conversation with others. There's not uh, wrong or right. Everything is kind of uh, material for discussion and there's no certainties. And it's also your moment to bring together many different forms of experimentation and representation 
And the school basically provides the possibility of doing this. Uh, but then once you uh, present it and that's your time, uh, of course, it happens in front of a community, a community that have fun with all inventions that keep celebrating uh, invention. And it's something that we all enjoy, but also love to discuss and to see what's the kind of hidden options what are the aspects of it that we can see in a from a different perspective? So basically we advance together and we problematize what we do all the time. You don't have to be right. You just have to be doing things and keeping discussing and kind of making your work more complex through questions and through the interaction with others. This is kind of what we believe in uh, at the AAT. And and this is something that also brings us in conversation with others. This summer, we will have symposiums in which basically all studios will expand into conversation with scientists, activists. We, uh, every every uh, week we had for uh, in, during the fall and the, and the spring, these technocritical assemblies in which basically we had people coming to talk about my, uh, microbes uh, and how that affected architecture or uh, uh, Oh, I'm remembering now, for instance, an amazing conversation about the economy of social housing and how important it was, how the property was defined legally uh, to ensure the maintenance of buildings. So scientists of all different disciplines. So for instance, we had a huge, an amazing conversation of a, uh, a bunch of people that had been uh, putting together kind of a network that connected all the computers in Ivy League universities across the country. So it could be used at night for activist projects uh, that would use the, the computational capacity of all these universities at the time that they were not using it. So basically we are constantly engaging with uh, scientists, experts, activists, people from other disciplines to basically have a conversation of what is technology, what is science, what is uh, knowledge, uh, 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 if we see it from an architectural point of view and we mobilize it as part of our discussions. Transcolarities arenas of design is a fundamental part of, the, of what we do and it's what to a certain extent brings the class together for the first time. And this is something that Angel, Maria Christine, Joel, uh, Ali will tell you more probably, but basically we explore, I think last year we, we explored more than 200 buildings and projects that go beyond the notion of what a building is. But basically we try to see what it means, what we do, what do we mean by ecology, for instance, which is something that is not simple. Architecture is producing huge knowledge about what do we mean when we say uh, uh, ecology, or what do we mean when we say body, or what do we mean when we say technology? And basically we see a huge amount of architectural projects and we discuss what are the ideas that they have behind and what is the way that they are materializing it? And this is not something that is closed. You will be asked to produce your own uh, reading of many of these buildings, to work on new buildings to be added to our list. But basically, we want to understand what is the way that the design of buildings constructs the possibility for architecture to intervene societies, environments, ecosystems, political frames, and to change them, to introduce change in them. Uh, arguments is something that I'm, I already mentioned. It's, a, it's also a crucial part of what we do. We basically invite the most important people that is discussing architecture now, and we have conversations, discussions with them. Uh, Forma Fantasma, you see here, Jack Halberstam, the trans theorist, uh, uh, Laura Poitras. Uh, we, we basically invite uh, Ruha Benjamin that we hope to have. Uh, 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 basically, what we try to see is what is the leading edge of the uh, discourse and criticality and research uh, applied to architecture at this right moment now. And we bring these people directly to discuss with us uh, their ideas and to confront them with our own ideas. This is a great resource for the program and it, it basically allows you to directly gain the confidence to discuss one-to-one -one with the uh, leading voices in architecture and criticality. And this, I mean, these are always very exciting uh, moments for the program. This year it will be amazing because it will be bringing together also the, the graduating class, uh, you guys that are here, in a discussion that I think will be uh, quite, quite amazing, quite unique.
we have the time also to do that. We expand lunch, we bring lunch normally this year. We'll, we'll see how we do it, but uh, it will be exciting. And then we get to the fall and to the, and to the spring. And what is quite exciting is basically both studios and electives uh, give you access to a broad number of people uh, and, and what I would describe as probably the a big part of the most important people operating in architecture now, very diverse. Um, I mean, I could talk for hours about each of the people that you see here and the way that they are part of the school uh, and what they contribute to is people probably that you're very familiar with. Uh, they come at different moments. They, uh, but they, you have the, the possibility of interacting with them, uh, taking, I mean, basically the studios are taken uh, through a lottery and, and uh, you have options, you present your options, you can see the, the studios, uh, uh, the different studios also in the uh, reviews, not only the ones that you take and, uh, but also visual and technology courses are uh, quite important. Uh, I, I always kind of insist on the, the kind of the, the great potential of uh, working uh, in close proximity with people like Laura Kurgan and Lola Benalon, they offer uh, visual and technology courses. They are the sequence directors for that. And that is something that you can, you can take to your electives as well. But basically GSAP is very well known both for the innovation in representation and that's something that you, you will be invited to, to, get, to dig in. Uh, and also in the huge engagement on materiality, on the reinvention of materiality. And that's something that we, we keep doing and you, you're, you'll be doing. Um, hopefully, uh, I think if everything goes well, we will go back to uh, in-person progressively. A big part of what we'll do is also traveling, not as visitors, but engaging with people where we go. This is a trip, for instance, we did to uh, Iceland with CLC and an advanced studio that I director. Uh, we didn't go as tourists here. We were working with more than 15 different scientists as we were there visiting them, discussing them with them. Uh, basically, we consider this kind of uh, reciprocal relationship that we established with the locations we're working with and kind of a, a, an opportunity to, to basically uh, understand that uh, the work we, did, we do need to be situated. Uh, and, uh, and basically also uh, we will be uh, offering uh, studio, summer studio TAs to your class uh, and, uh, uh, and for the coming students, uh, uh, students for, the, for the current students we're offering associate positions in the fall. But this is something that is part of the, uh, of basically uh, a larger uh, engagement of the program with basically bridging the next steps, offering the possibility for those that are not from, from the US uh, to, to gain a, a professional experience afterwards, something that is uh, uh, in New York or in the US, uh, something that is very much facilitated uh, by the career development a team uh, with Lee and Karen that you, uh, if you, you've already met uh, and the team talked about their work. They're quite amazing. They will be very busy in the summer also working with the uh, graduating class. Uh, but, but when we talk about uh, the next steps for the AD class, I'm excited to say that this is really diverse and that it's, of course, many of you want to work in uh, big uh, uh, ambitious offices Others want to work in more independent groups uh, uh, or, or smaller teams or kind of creative uh, uh, small teams in New York. Others want to be part of public agencies. Others want to uh, engage on activism and advo advocative work. Uh, basically the school facilitates uh, kind of a, a custom, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, possibility of kind of bridging uh, the, the next step, the professional step. 